Hello everyone, it's me again. I finally finished my big project in Space Engineers. This one was obviously inspired by the 40k universe of Warhammer. I call it the Archer's Wrath. Now, this video took a while, mainly because the details were a bit sketchy and I'm not entirely fully enveloped into the Warhammer community, so I didn't know how to get the summer details right. But as you can see, I think I got most of it right. The back end was pretty tricky. But as you can see, this ship is a Imperial 40k cruiser. It is built for absolute combat in space area. This thing is not atmospheric friendly. So keep it out of any planetary areas unless you plan to crash the ship into something you don't like. Her main armaments on her sides are these artillery pieces. They are locked and mounted into one position so they cannot be moved. So much like an old pirate ship from the 17th century, you have to turn to face the enemy and fire. Unfortunately. But that's just sticking to the design of the ship. Obviously you have mounted turrets as a precaution. Down here, we have a few more artillery pieces. But the bulk of them are on the top to add protection to the ship's frontal half. As up there, that's where most of the important stuff is. The front half, as you can see, is a hybrid of heavy and light metals. So if you want, you can ram things into it. If a little demonstration will happen soon. Down below we have what I believe is called the Nova Cannon. I could be mistaken, but I think that's what it's called. It's essentially just three rail cannons mounted together, with a camera to assist with aiming. And we shall head inside. Now, there is no official doorway into it, aside from the hangars. And there is no connection block, as this ship is designed to be self-sustaining on its own. Also down here we have two additional rail cannons mounted onto a custom turret, one on each side of the uh, wings. Oh, got a lag. In here we have the hangar. Now I haven't designed any 40k inspired ships yet. They're a bit tricky, but I will get to it eventually. Close the doors. Now this area is not atmospheric. It can be if you want to, but there is no ventilation systems in here. It's purely designed to be a vacuum. Moving on through here, we have the airlock. Now this area is pretty blank. It's designed to stop there. Someone gets through to the hangars. They're effectively in a dead zone. That can be killed off by the crew or the intruders or the security systems. To get anywhere you need to use the stairs. Now I've gotten lost a few times I will admit. But for the sake of it we'll just give a quick tour. Over here we have the reactive room and jump and warp drives. Here we have the main warp drive room. So it's about 10 jump drives all rigged together to go off when you need them to. But I will wait until demonstration of the battle test is over before I show up that bit. Down here, we're in the bottom half. Here is the crew quarters. The room, any room. It can house up to five or six people depending on the size of the room. This one's the more standard room, it holds up to five people. And you get a lovely view of the outside world. For whatever, whatever worth that is. Now to access the main gun area of the ship. So an edge. You go through here. 
These corridors are spaced every couple of blocks. As this section of the ship was modular designed. Go up here. Go back in here. Go into the airlock. Now this area is not a sealed vacuum. There's no oxygen in the air. Because these things stick out of the walls. But as you can see, quite a lot of gunnery space for your crew to fire. And this just goes on for the entire length of the ship in here. This would be arguably the biggest weak spot of the ship, considering there's no sealed off areas. But given the amount of firepower this ship can put out, I think it's a fair compromise. Now, we have two ways of getting out of here. The nose of the ship is sealed off entirely, it's where extra tanks and thrusters are stored. Because Imperial ships don't have any sidle thrusters from what I could see in art of it. So all the side thrusters and the back thrusters, aside from the ones on the wings, are completely hidden and tucked away. To head back up to the upper decks, we'll just close this area, keep the oxygen in, and we'll head up these stairs. Just going. Here are the upper decks. You'll see you'll see gyroscopes pretty much every length of the ship. The more you add to a ship, the more easier it is con to control. Like the bottom half, these sections are entirely modular and designed to be sealed off in emergencies. I will admit there's not much decoration to this area, to these areas of ships. I was running low on space, on CPU space for this thing. But as you can see, all the sections of the windows, barring one window in particular, I couldn't close it properly. It's completely sealable in case of a breach, or in case you need to use the Geller fields to jump. Now, heading this way, we can head to the fun part of the ship. The command bridge. Again, game's lagging a bit. Just a quick stop. We have the health rooms. We have the uh, first aid room, right above the hangar room to put the troops back into quick combat. The ladder takes us down to the hangar room. Before I do that, I have one more area to show before I go to the, to the bridge. That's this stair room here. This takes us to the lowest of the, the decks. Oh, this one. It's even lower. Nope. A lot of these rooms are empty, they're for user decoration you wish. Just heading down here. Here we have the other combat component of the ship. Right now we're at the very bottom of the ship. Over here, in case of emergencies, we have the escape pods. Or, I believe they're called salvation pods. Don't quote me on that though. One accidentally deployed during a test, it's currently on Mars. But this entire section is designed to be blown off using those ion thrusters. They're the only ion thrusters on the ship, aside from the escape pods and the drop pods. This entire section is designed to blast off, hopefully minimizing any potential dangers as the ship's crashing. And if you haven't noticed, no, there is not enough for the entire crew. In 40k, only plot armor keeps you alive, and that's pretty much it and it's not always guaranteed either. There's two on that side, just for the sake of it, but I can hold three, and there's three on that side, as you will see here. It is 
technically sealed, but there are no ventilation blocks in here for the simple fact that this thing's only meant to be used when the ship's down and out. Another form of transportation, albeit more of a semi one way area, is the drop pod area. Drop pod room. Much like the hangars and the escape pod room, this one is not ventilated either and is designed to simply drop these big fellas onto the planet to engage combat. To do so, you simply go over to the controllers right here. Push the second button first. These open these massive hangers. I've tried a couple of times to get them synced up, but it's a bit funny. I need a fuse. As you see, we're at the back of the ship. This provides an additional layer of protection from the crew, allowing these drop pods to be safely deployed, mostly safely. Obviously, the crew would close up all the hatches. Then these get dropped down. And the crews themselves deploy them when they need to. I'm not going to do that thing is that these are the exact same drop pods I used in a previous video. Right, these should close. Mostly okay. Oh. Yeah, my apologies folks, that door is funny. Close this, move on to this. We'll head back to the bridge area. And that's where all the fun stuff happens. We'll cheat a little and use the jetpack. This is why I gave some space in between the stairs. fly up and injure yourself instead of falling down the stairs and injuring yourself. Right, up here. Yeah, I'm just giving you the heads up now folks. When you download this map, you this project, you will get lost. I've gotten lost a couple of times and well I built it up here we have the command bridge or the command cathedral I think it's called you have a full 180 degree view of the battle should you need to more hangar windows to block off in case of damage or breach As you can see, the front half is protected by dozens of turrets. But the main weapons, like I said earlier, are the artillery pieces mounted on each side of the ship. Now before we engage in combat, let's have a quick tour of the main sections. Like I said, I've run out of room before I could finish this. And most of the rooms are for you to decorate, should you need to, or want to. But this ship is mostly built for fighting. Here we have the crew quarters, or captain's quarters, just over there. The captain's quarters are right over there, seeing as how he's the big, got the biggest room in the ship. And like I said, it's not that crazy, I'm still doing some areas. Now, over here we have, as all Imperial warships need, a church. Done the best I can given the limited designs. But as you can see, nice wide open rooms, windows, lots of lighting, lots of chairs. 
we got your statues. Biggie, Matador, uh, Killerman maybe, I'm not too sure. But you got the Ecclesiarchy spot so you can talk to the masses. And like I said, this window here is the only one that can't be breached in case of a leak or damage. But other than that, not a bad job all in all. Now for the fun part. We get to see what this beast can do in a combat situation. Down we go. The main weapons, as I've said a couple of times now, just give it one three three sixty two as much again. Uh, broad bow and st uh, port and starboard artillery pieces on the top on each side. Now I do give fair warning: this ship is a little slow in the combat zone. What she lacks in speed, she makes up for a combination of armor and firepower. If you would gauge to the Zeppelin on the left. One hit and most of her propulsion systems and hangers are destroyed. But at least she's knocked out of the fight. Downside to non automated turrets, you need to make sure you're in line with them. Oh, excuse me, folks. Sorry about that, folks. Had a phone call. Right. Let's try that again. This is why I mostly rely on turrets. I cannot aim the same way. Too close, too close. Oh. The light does not help, given how much firepower I'm dishing out in the fight. didn't do that. My apologies. Just gonna make a minor adjustment folks. That I just realized I did not put that camera on. That camera allows you to aim for the ships. As you can see, clear through the ship. 
on this place is Zeppelin. Now, you may have noticed the other rail guns. That is on these ones here. Mounted on each side of the ship are six retractable rail guns mounted onto pistons, as you can see here. This is to minimize any damage that could be done to them and also to effectively surprise the enemy with additional firepower. But much like the artillery pieces, it relies solely on the ship's movement to aim. Now another additional feature of this ship, which is a bit smaller but not as important, is as I said earlier, the front half is covered in a hybrid of heavy metal and light armor. This effectively allows to maneuver or even grab smaller ships out of the way in a fight, which I shall demonstrate with this hunk of junk in the front of us. The only issue is that this ship takes up quite a lot to get into full speed. It also creates quite a lot of lag for some reason. Plus there's an additional risk that your ship could get squashed in the middle of it. As for combat capabilities of the automated turrets, well, the minute they spot a hard enemy, they'll lock on and they will fire, providing your ship with enough time to bring its more potent sides into the fight. I'm going to take a little cheat room, it's going to take a window out to see the damage of the ship. Remembering that small ship cost us the railguns and caused minimum damage to the front half of the ship. So while you can do it, it's not fully advisable. Because it also, if it manages to breach this particular space here, you risk putting the engines and some spare tanks into, into jeopardy. We also have interior turrets for these things specifically. If this thing blows, it will take out the entire front half of the ship. You may have noticed the warheads. I'll get back to that in a second. So I finished the jump, jump demonstration. As for the enemy ship, the entire bridge has been breached. It is still flyable, but going from the railgun firing, we've taken out his propulsion system to go We've taken out half his propulsion system. 
and blown a hole right through to the end. So if it's a robot elephant, that's not too bad. Now for the final capabilities and it's jump drive capable jump drive capacity. You also may have noticed got its name written on the side just for the hell of it. Oh, where's that breach? There it is. Now, you may have noticed three additional states here. The one to the right of us controls all the turret systems. Controls the custom ones, sorry. As you can see, this one only does two things. Engages the shields and engages the jump drives. Let's angle us... Mm, let's angle us over... What's a good spot? Let's angle us near the moon just for the hell of it. Right there should do the trick, see how close we can get to it. Before you engage the jump drives, you engage the gala fields. That shuts every single iron, every single hangar door in the structure. As you can see, most of them are closing up now. They are a bit slow, but doing this also prevents any damage in a fight. So if necessary, you can, cl you should close them to minimize any structural damage from spreading. And you see, the church ones close up. We'll leave those open just for the hell of it, because there's no real way to access them from inside. And engaging jump drives. This one has a capacity of 13. And will jump us about 400 kilometers from 13 jump drives. And as you can see from the thing, this ship weighs 81,000 kilograms. I'm sorry, I miss... Hang on, no, I'm misreading that. It's 81 million kilograms. Just over. So let's see how long, let's see what this thing can do. Jumping drives. As you can see, we've actually surpassed the moon and now actually traveling elsewhere. Now, the ship's weaknesses mostly are as its capacity to turn. Given her size and weight, she doesn't turn on a dime very easily. But she can do it just slowly. That pretty much wraps up her firepower capacity and her movement. It does take a while to turn though. Now for one final little thing. As you saw earlier, let's bring us down to full stop before I do anything. Might as well keep the Gellerfield shut. The reason why I put all the lights mostly near the windows, that's to minimize, that's to show off if not they're closed. Now there is one final feature of this ship. This one is to prevent any, to prevent capture, you can either do two things. You can either pilot the ship into the ground of the nearest star, nearest planet or moon. But seeing as how that still leaves a good amount of salvage, and depending on how good the crew is, they can take the ship back from you and pilot out of the gravity well, but it can be a bit of a miss. Now, 
We have one final feature that's in most of my sh oh, sorry. That is in most of my ship's features. A self-destruct mechanism. Which did not load, which bugged out again. Let me just make a check. This one is set for 2 minutes and 4 seconds, it's as close as I could get to the actual thing. Once engaged, you have 2 minutes to get to either the escape pods or the drop pods. That's enough for the main cruise. Oh, I got a comment. Yeah, that's more than enough time for the main crew to get to the escape pods, not enough for the servants and the, the gunnery crew to get to it. It is still a little nerve-wracking, making sure you can get there before ship blows up. <laughs> Just a quick check. We have 1 minute and 40 seconds. For the sake of the argument, we'll use this side first. No. We'll use this one first. That engages. That should kick off. Sometimes, because the ship's so big, she bugs out a little. It's annoying when they don't operate. Take, for instance, the pistons are bugging out to you now. My apologies. Had to work. One minute, eight seconds to detonation. We engage this. We hit this. In a pinch, you hit the, the rocketing button, which kicks you out of the ship entirely. This ship is purely ion powered, mostly. The thrusters at the back are just designed to kick you away from the ship in emergencies. She is slow to respond given that she's mostly iron powered. Game's lagging a little, I do apologize. And it's frozen.
Okay, that should really stabilize us enough to watch the show. Hopefully not bringing us back to it. Alright. Hopefully this motion sickness stops, but mostly I'm trying to get us to see us and watch the big explosion. Mostly when the thrusters are engaged, you aim towards the nearest star or planet, star or nearest moon or planet, and then you just kick it off and you wait till the fuel burns up, because it gives you a good chance to get away from the ship before it blows. Surely the minutes pass by now. Oh, my luck, if I go back to investigate, the ship's gonna blow up in my face. blow up. And the game's frozen. Give me a second, folks. I will just pause the video. And we should come back to the explosion hopefully soon. This is usually the part where I get killed, but I saw something happen. I'm guessing given such as such, given that it's a large enough structure. Solid structure, I just banged my head on it. Where's the wire it's gone though? Hang on, maybe there wasn't any walkers in here. Maybe the warheads themselves just deleted. They need to clear. Actually, this fixes it. No, I, I think I know what happened. Those self destruct mechanisms I put into the bridge? That was for the escape for the drop pods to prevent capture. The big explosion we heard was those things going off in the hangar. If there's nothing else, we just discovered that they work. And my game froze again.
pause when it is unfrozen. Alright, there we are. Took a good 10 minutes. As you can see, the enemy is not getting much of their ship. Yeah, it takes a while, but I can actually still find, I can still identify what bits are from which. That's part of the cone, that's part of the nose. But as you see, the self-destruct pretty much renders the entire ship a non-threat. Mostly. I'm willing to imagine this thing could still fire. I'm actually willing to bet this thing is still flyable. Oh no, no bridge is destroyed. I think the only thing that survived in tag is... Ironically enough, I think the only thing that survived in one piece is the church part. Huh. Well, I like the Emperor's wisdom and all that. But other than that, the whole ship's fucked. If you'll pardon my language. Just to quickly confirm my suspicions. Yep. That explosion we heard earlier was not the self-destruct of the ship itself. It was the self-destruct of the drop pods, which I built to prevent them from being captured by an enemy. Oh. I'm not sure why these aren't kicking off. I'll have to reevaluate them later, but for the time being, that is the Archer's Wrath. A 40k inspired warship. If you like this build, be sure to like, subscribe, check it out. I think I'll put the link in the download, the download in the comments or description. And I shall see you tomorrow. Or well, whenever I have the next big project. I'm currently working on something else as well. But big ships like this, they take a little bit of time. Especially when my computer decides it doesn't want them to play. Until next time, toodaloo.